Ethylene oxide, called oxirane by IUPAC, is an organic compound with the formula C2H4O. It is a cyclic ether and the simplest epoxide, a three-membered ring consisting of one oxygen atom and two carbon atoms. Ethylene oxide is a colorless and flammable gas with a faintly sweet odor. Because it is a strained ring, ethylene oxide easily participates in a number of addition reactions that result in ring opening. Ethylene oxide is isomeric with acetaldehyde and with vinyl alcohol. Ethylene oxide is industrially produced by oxidation of ethylene in the presence of silver catalyst. The reactivity that is responsible for many of ethylene oxide's hazards also make it useful. Although too dangerous for direct household use and generally unfamiliar to consumers, ethylene oxide is used for making many consumer products as well as non-consumer chemicals and intermediates. These products include detergents, thickeners, solvents, plastics, and various organic chemicals such as ethylene glycol, ethanolamines, simple and complex glycols, polyglycol ethers, and other compounds. Although it is a vital raw material with diverse applications, including the manufacture of products like polysorbate 20 and polyethylene glycol PEG, that are often more effective and less toxic than alternative materials, ethylene oxide itself is a very hazardous substance. At room temperature it is a flammable, carcinogenic, mutagenic, irritating, and anesthetic gas. As a toxic gas that leaves no residue on items it contacts, ethylene oxide is a surface disinfectant that is widely used in hospitals and the medical equipment industry to replace steam in the sterilization of heat-sensitive tools and equipment, such as disposable plastic syringes. It is so flammable and extremely explosive that it is used as a main component of thermobaric weapons, therefore, it is commonly handled and shipped as a refrigerated liquid to control its hazardous nature. History Ethylene oxide was first reported in 1859 by the French chemist Charles Adolphe Wurtz, who prepared it by treating 2-chloroethanol with potassium hydroxide. CLCH 2 CH 2 OH plus CO CH 2 CH 2 O plus KCL plus H 2 O Wurtz measured the boiling point of ethylene oxide as 13.5 degrees Celsius, 56.3 degrees Fahrenheit, slightly higher than the present value, and discovered the ability of ethylene oxide to react with acids and salts of metals. Wurtz mistakenly assumed that ethylene oxide has the properties of an organic base. This misconception persisted until 1896 when Georg Bredig found that ethylene oxide is not an electrolyte. That it differed from other ethers, particularly by its propensity to engage in addition reactions, which are typical of unsaturated compounds, had long been a matter of debate. The heterocyclic triangular structure of ethylene oxide was proposed by 1868 or earlier. Wurtz's 1859 synthesis long remained the only method of preparing ethylene oxide, despite numerous attempts, including by Wurtz himself, to produce ethylene oxide directly from ethylene. Only in 1931 did French chemist Theodore Leffert develop a method of direct oxidation of ethylene in the presence of silver catalyst. Since 1940, almost all industrial production of ethylene oxide has relied on this process. Sterilization by ethylene oxide for the preservation of spices was patented in 1938 by the American chemist Lloyd Hall. Ethylene oxide achieved industrial importance during World War I as a precursor to both the coolant ethylene glycol and the chemical weapon mustard gas. Molecular structure and properties the epoxy cycle of ethylene oxide is an almost regular triangle with bond angles of about 60 degrees and a significant angular strain corresponding to the energy of 105 kJ per mole. For comparison, in alcohols the COH angle is about 110 degrees, in ethers, the COC angle is 120 degrees. The moment of inertia about each of the principal axes are Ia. 32.921 times 10 minus 40 grams CM2, Ib. 
37.926 times 10 minus 40 grams CM2 and IC equals 59.510 times 10 minus 40 grams CM2. The relative instability of the carbon oxygen bonds in the molecule is revealed by the comparison in the table of the energy required to break 2 CO bonds in the ethylene oxide or 1 CO bond in ethanol and dimethyl ether. This instability correlates with its high reactivity, explaining the ease of its ring opening reactions. See chemical properties. Physical properties. Ethylene oxide is a colorless gas at 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, and is a mobile liquid at 0 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Viscosity of liquid ethylene oxide at 0 degrees Celsius is about 5.5 times lower than that of water. The gas has a characteristic sweet odor of ether, noticeable when its concentration in air exceeds 500 ppm. Ethylene oxide is readily soluble in water, ethanol, diethyl ether and many organic solvents. Main thermodynamical constants are The surface tension of liquid ethylene oxide, at the interface with its own vapor, is 35.8 mJ per square meter 0.00079 cal per square foot at minus 50.1 degrees Celsius minus 58.2 degrees Fahrenheit and 27.6 mJ per square meter 0.00061 cal per square foot at minus 0.1 degrees Celsius 31.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The boiling point increases with the vapor pressure as follows, 57.7 degrees Celsius 135.9 degrees Fahrenheit 2 atmospheres 200 kilopascals, 29 psi, 83.6 degrees Celsius 182.5 degrees Fahrenheit 5 atmospheres 510 kilopascals, 73 psi, and 114.0 degrees Celsius 237.2 degrees Fahrenheit 10 atmospheres 1000 kilopascals 150 psi. Viscosity decreases with temperature with the values of 0.577 kilopascals s at minus 49.8 degrees Celsius, minus 57.6 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.488 kilopascals s at minus 38.2 degrees Celsius, minus 36.8 degrees Fahrenheit, 0.394 kilopascals s at minus 21.0 degrees Celsius, minus 5.8 degrees Fahrenheit, and 0.320 kilopascals. S at 0 degrees Celsius 32 degrees Fahrenheit, between minus 91 and 10.5 degrees Celsius minus 131.8 and 50.9 degrees Fahrenheit, vapor pressure P, in MMHG, varies with temperature T in degree C, as Lg P equals 6.2251 Minus 1115.1 244.14 plus T Display style LGP equals 6.2251 FRAC 1115.1 244.14 plus T Asterisk N A data not available. Asterisk N A data not available. Chemical properties. Ethylene oxide readily reacts with diverse compounds with opening of the ring. Its typical reactions are with nucleophiles which proceed via the SN2 mechanism both in acidic weak nucleophiles, water, alcohols, and alkaline media, strong nucleophiles, O-, RO-, NH3, RNH2, Rurin, etc. The general reaction scheme is and more specific reactions are described below. Addition of water and alcohols Aqueous solutions of ethylene oxide are rather stable and can exist for a long time without any noticeable chemical reaction, but adding a small amount of acid, such as strongly diluted sulfuric acid, immediately leads to the formation of ethylene glycol, even at room temperature. 
CH2CH2O plus H2O ho CH2CH2O reaction also occurs in the gas phase, in the presence of a phosphoric acid salt as a catalyst. The reaction is usually carried out at about 60 degrees Celsius 140 degrees Fahrenheit with a large excess of water, in order to prevent the reaction of the formed ethylene glycol with ethylene oxide that would form D and triethylene glycol. 2 CH2 CH2 O plus H2 O ho CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O H3 CH2 CH2 O plus H2 O ho CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O use of alkaline catalysts may lead to the formation of polyethylene glycol N CH2 CH2 O plus H2 O ho CH2 CH2 O N reactions with alcohols proceed similarly yielding ethylene glycol ethers CH2 CH2 O plus C2 H5 O H ho CH2 CH2 O C2 H5 2 CH2 CH2 O plus C2 H5 O H ho CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O C2 H5 reactions with lower alcohols occur less actively than with water and require more severe conditions, such as heating to 160 degrees Celsius 320 degrees Fahrenheit, and pressurizing to 3 MPa 440 psi and adding an acid or alkali catalyst. Reactions of ethylene oxide with fatty alcohols proceed in the presence of sodium metal, sodium hydroxide or boron trifluoride and are used for the synthesis of surfactants. Addition of carboxylic acids and their derivatives Reactions of ethylene oxide with carboxylic acids in the presence of a catalyst results in glycol mono and diesters. CH2 CH2 O plus CH3 CO2 HHO CH2 CH2 O2 CCH3 CH2 CH2 O plus CH3 CO2 O CH3 CO2 CH2 CH2 O2 CCH3 The addition of acid amides proceeds similarly. CH2 CH2 O plus CH3 CONH2 HO CH2 CH2 NHC O CH3 addition of ethylene oxide to higher carboxylic acids is carried out at elevated temperatures typically 140 to 180 degrees Celsius 284 to 356 degrees Fahrenheit and pressure 0.3 to 0.5 megapascals 44 to 73 psi in an inert atmosphere in presence of an alkaline catalyst, concentration 0.01 to 2%, such as hydroxide or carbonate of sodium or potassium. The carboxylate ion acts as nucleophile in the reaction. CH2 CH2 O plus RCO2 minus RCO2 CH2 CH2 O minus RCO2 CH2 CH2 O minus plus RCO2 H RCO2 CH2 CH2 O H plus RCO2 minus Adding ammonia and amines Ethylene oxide reacts with ammonia forming a mixture of mono, D and triethanolamines. The reaction is stimulated by adding a small amount of water. CH2 CH2 O plus NH3 HO CH2 CH2 NH22 CH2 CH2 O plus NH3 HO CH2 CH2 2 NH3 CH2 CH2 O plus NH3 HO CH2 CH2 3 N similarly precede the reactions with primary and secondary amines. CH2 CH2 O plus RNH2 HO CH2 CH2 NHR dialkylamino ethanols can further react with ethylene oxide, forming amino polyethylene glycols. N CH2 CH2 O plus R2 N CH2 CH2 O H R2 N CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O NH trimethylamine reacts with ethylene oxide in the presence of water, forming choline. 
CH2 CH2 O plus CH3 3 N plus H2 O HO CH2 CH2 N CH3 3 plus OH minus aromatic primary and secondary amines also react with ethylene oxide, forming the corresponding aerolamino alcohols. Halide addition Ethylene oxide readily reacts with aqueous solutions of hydrochloric, hydrobromic and hydroiodic acids to form halohydrins. The reaction occurs easier with the last two acids. CH2CH2O plus HCl HO CH2CH2ClThe reaction with these acids competes with the acid catalyzed hydration of ethylene oxide, therefore, there is always a byproduct of ethylene glycol with an admixture of diethylene glycol. For a cleaner product, the reaction is conducted in the gas phase or in an organic solvent. Ethylene fluorohydrin is obtained differently, by boiling hydrogen fluoride with a 5-6% solution of ethylene oxide in diethyl ether. The ether normally has a water content of 1.5-2%. In absence of water, ethylene oxide polymerizes. Halohydrins can also be obtained by passing ethylene oxide through aqueous solutions of metal halides, 2 CH2 CH2 O plus copper 2 chloride plus 2 H2O2 HO CH2 CH2 Cl plus copper 2 hydroxide. Metal organic addition Interaction of ethylene oxide with organomagnesium compounds, which are Grignard reagents, can be regarded as nucleophilic substitution influenced by carbonine organometallic compounds. The final product of the reaction is a primary alcohol CH2 CH2 O plus RMGBR R minus CH 2 CH 2 minus OMGBR H 2 O R minus CH 2 CH two minus O primary alcohol Display style C E C H two C H two O plus R M G B R to R C H two C H two O M G B R two C E H two O overset primary tilde alcohol R C H two C H two O H Similar mechanism is valid for other organometallic compounds, such as alkyl lithium. CH2 CH2 O plus RLI alkyl lithium R minus CH two CH two minus Ollie H two O R minus CH two CH two minus O Display style C E C H two C H two O plus overset alkyl tilde lithium R L I two R C H two C H two Oli two C E H two O R C H two C H two O H other addition reactions 
addition of hydrogen cyanide. Ethylene oxide easily reacts with the hydrogen cyanide forming ethylene cyanohydrin. CH2CH2, O plus HCN HO CH2CH2CNA slightly chilled 10 to 20 degrees Celsius aqueous solution of calcium cyanide can be used instead of HCN. 2 CH2 CH2 O plus calcium cyanide plus 2 H2O2 HO CH2 CH2 CN plus calcium hydroxide ethylene cyanohydrin easily loses water, producing acrylonitrile. HO CH2 CH2 CN CH2 equals CHCN plus H2O. Addition of hydrogen sulfide and mercaptans. When reacting with the hydrogen sulfide, ethylene oxide forms 2 mercaptoethanol and thiodiglycol, and with alkyl mercaptans it produces 2 alkyl mercaptoethanol. CH2CH2 O plus H2S HO CH2CH2HS2 CH2CH2 O plus H2S HO CH2CH2 2S CH2CH2 O plus RHS HO CH2CH2S RTHE excess of ethylene oxide with an aqueous solution of hydrogen sulfide leads to the tris hydroxyethyl sulfonyl hydroxide 3 CH2 CH2 O plus H2S HO CH2 CH2 3S plus O minus Addition of nitrous and nitric acids Reaction of ethylene oxide with aqueous solutions of barium nitrite, calcium nitrite, magnesium nitrite, zinc nitrite or sodium nitrite leads to the formation of 2 nitroethanol 2 CH2 CH2 O plus calcium nitrite plus 2 H2O2 HO CH2 CH2 NO2 plus calcium hydroxide with nitric acid, ethylene oxide forms mono and dinitroglycols. CH2 CH2 O plus HNO 3 Nitric Acid HO minus CH 2 CH 2 minus ONO 2 minus H two O plus H N O three O two No minus C H Two CH two minus oh no two Display style C E C H two C H two O plus overset nitric atop acid H N O three to ho C H two C H two O N O two two C E plus no three C E H two O O two N O C H two C H two O N O underscore two Reaction with compounds containing active methylene groups in the presence of alkoxides, reactions of ethylene oxide with compounds containing active methylene group leads to the formation of butyrolactones. Alkylation of aromatic compounds Ethylene oxide enters into the Friedel-Crafts reaction with benzene to form phenethyl alcohol. Styrene can be obtained in one stage if this reaction is conducted at elevated temperatures 315 to 440 degrees Celsius 599 to 824 degrees Fahrenheit and pressures 0.35 to 0.7 MPa 51 to 102 PSI in presence of an aluminosilicate catalyst. 
Synthesis of crown ethers A series of polynomial heterocyclic compounds, known as crown ethers, can be synthesized with ethylene oxide. One method is the cationic cyclopolymerization of ethylene oxide, limiting the size of the formed cycle N CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O NTO suppress the formation of other linear polymers. The reaction is carried out in a highly dilute solution. Reaction of ethylene oxide with sulfur dioxide in the presence of cesium salts leads to the formation of an 11 membered heterocyclic compound which has the complexing properties of crown ethers. Isomerization when heated to about 400 degrees Celsius (750 degrees Fahrenheit) or to 150 to 300 degrees Celsius (300 to 570 degrees Fahrenheit) in the presence of a catalyst, aluminium oxide (H3PO4), etc., ethylene oxide isomerizes into acetaldehyde. CH2 CH2 O Al two O three two hundred C CH three Cho Acetaldehyde Display style C E C H two C H two O two C E two hundred carat circ C C E aluminium oxide overset acetaldehyde C H three C H O. The radical mechanism was proposed to explain this reaction in the gas phase. It comprises the following stages. In reaction three, M refers to the wall of the reaction vessel or to a heterogeneous catalyst. The moiety CH3CHO asterisk represents a short-lived lifetime of 10-8.5 seconds, activated molecule of acetaldehyde. Its excess energy is about 355.6 kJ per mole, which exceeds by 29.3 kJ per mole the binding energy of the C-C bond in acetaldehyde. In absence of a catalyst, the thermal isomerization of ethylene oxide is never selective and apart from acetaldehyde yields significant amount of byproducts. See section thermal decomposition. Reduction reaction. Ethylene oxide can be hydrogenated into ethanol in the presence of a catalyst, such as nickel, platinum, palladium, boranes, lithium aluminium hydride, and some other hydrides. CH2 CH2 O plus H 2 80 C me PT PD BH 3 LIALH 4 or other hydrides C Two H five O ethanol display style CE CH two CH two O plus H two two atop CE me PT PD BH three LIALH four text or other hydrides CE eighty carat circ C underset ethanol C two H five O H Conversely, with some other catalysts, ethylene oxide may be reduced by hydrogen to ethylene with the yield up to 70%. The reduction catalysts include mixtures of zinc dust and acetic acid, of lithium aluminium hydride with titanium trichloride. The reducing agent is actually titanium dichloride, formed by the reaction between LiAlH4 and titanium 3 chloride, and of iron 3 chloride with butylithium in tetrahydrofuran. CH two CH 
2 o plus h 2 z n plus c h 3 c o o h c h 2 equals C H two ethylene plus H two O Display style C E C H two C H two O plus H two two atop C E Z N plus C H three C O O H underset ethylene C H two equals C H two plus H two O Oxidation Ethylene oxide can further be oxidized, depending on the conditions, to glycolic acid or carbon dioxide. CH 2 CH 2 O plus O 2 Agno 3 Hope 2 CO 2 H Glycolic Acid Display style C E C H two C H two O plus O two two C E silver one nitrate overset glycolic acid H O C H two C O two H Deep gas phase reactor oxidation of ethylene oxide at 800 minus 1000 K 527 to 727 degrees Celsius 980 to 1340 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 0.121 megapascal 15 to 145 psi yields a complex mixture of products containing O2 H2 CO CO2 CH4 C2H2 C2H4 C2H6 C3H6, C3H8 and CH3CHO. Dimerization In the presence of acid catalysts, ethylene oxide dimerizes to a 4-dioxane. The reaction mechanism is as follows. The dimerization reaction is unselective. By products include acetaldehyde, due to isomerization. The selectivity and speed of dimerization can be increased by adding a catalyst, such as platinum, platinum palladium, or iodine with sulfolane. 2-methyl-1,3-dioxylene is formed as a side product in the last case. Polymerization Liquid ethylene oxide can form polyethylene glycols. The polymerization can proceed via radical and ionic mechanisms, but only the latter has a wide practical application. Cationic polymerization of ethylene oxide is assisted by protic acids, hydrogen hypochlorite, HCl, Lewis acids, tin 4 chloride, BF3, etc. Organometallic compounds, or more complex reagents. N CH 2 CH 2 O Tin 1 chloride 4 CH 2 CH 2 minus O minus N polyethylene glycol Display style N C E C H two C H two O two C E tin four chloride overbrace C E C H two C H two O underscore N carrot C E polyethylene glycol. The reaction mechanism is as follows. 
At the first stage, the catalyst, MXM, is initiated by alkyl or acyl halogen or by compounds with active hydrogen atoms, usually water, alcohol or glycol. MXM plus Rho MXMRO minus H plus the resulting active complex reacts with ethylene oxide via the SN2 mechanism. CH2 CH2 O plus MXMRO minus H plus CH2 CH2 OH plus O minus RMXM CH2 CH2 OH plus O minus RMXM HO CH2 CH2 plus plus MXMRO minus 2 HO CH2 CH2 plus plus N CH2 CH2 O HO CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 N plus the chain breaks as Ho CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 N plus plus MXMRO minus Ho CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 NOR plus MXMH O CH2 CH2 NO CH2 CH2 plus plus MXMRO minus H O CH2 CH2 NO CH equals CH2 plus MXM plus Rohanionic polymerization of ethylene oxide is assisted by bases such as alkyl alkoxides, hydroxides, carbonates or other compounds of alkali or alkaline earth metals. The reaction mechanism is as follows CH2 CH2 O plus Rona RO CH2 CH2 O minus Na plus Rho CH2 CH2 O minus Na plus plus N CH2 CH2 O R O CH2 CH2 O N CH2 CH2 O minus Na plus Rho CH2 CH2 O N CH2 CH2 O minus Na plus R O CH2 CH2 O N CH equals CH2 plus Na RO CH2 CH2 O H two O N C H two C H two O minus Na plus plus H two O R O C H two C H two O N plus one O plus N A O H Thermal decomposition Ethylene oxide is relatively stable to heating, in the absence of a catalyst, it does not dissociate up to 300 degrees Celsius 572 degrees Fahrenheit, and only above 570 degrees Celsius 1058 degrees Fahrenheit, there is a major exothermic decomposition, which proceeds through the radical mechanism. The first stage involves isomerization, however high temperature accelerates the radical processes. They result in a gas mixture containing acetaldehyde, ethane, ethyl, methane, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, ketene and formaldehyde. High temperature pyrolysis 830-1200 K, 557 to 927 degrees Celsius, 1034 to 1700 degrees Fahrenheit at elevated pressure in an inert atmosphere leads to a more complex composition of the gas mixture, which also contains acetylene and propane. Contrary to the isomerization, initiation of the chain occurs mainly as follows CH2 CH2 O CH2 CH2 O CH2 O plus CH2 When carrying the thermal decomposition of ethylene oxide in the presence of transition metal compounds as catalysts, it is possible not only to reduce its temperature, but also to have ethyl as the main product, that is to reverse the ethylene oxide synthesis reaction. Other reactions Thiocyanate ions or thiorea transform ethylene oxide into thiorane ethylene sulfide. CH2 CH2 O plus NH2 2C equals S CH2 CH2 S plus NH2 2C equals O reaction of phosphorus pentachloride with ethylene oxide produces ethylene dichloride. CH2 CH2 O plus phosphorus pentachloride Cl CH2 CH2 Cl plus POCl3 Other dichloroderivatives of ethylene oxide can be obtained by combined action of sulfuryl chloride SOCl2 and pyridine and of triphenylphosphine and carbon tetrachloride. Phosphorus trichloride reacts with ethylene oxide forming chloroethyl esters of phosphorus acid. 
CH2CH2, O plus phosphorus trichloride ClCH2CH2OPCL22, CH2CH2, O plus phosphorus trichloride, ClCH2CH2O2 phosphorus trichloride, CH2CH2, O plus phosphorus trichloride ClCH2CH2O3 PTHE reaction product of ethylene oxide with acyl chlorides in the presence of sodium iodide is a complex iodoethyl ester. CH2CH2, O plus RCOCl plus NiRC, O, OCH2CH2I plus now heating ethylene oxide to 100 degrees Celsius with carbon dioxide, in a nonpolar solvent in the presence of bis, triphenylphosphine, nickel, zero, results in ethylene carbonate. In industry, a similar reaction is carried out at high pressure and temperature in the presence of quaternary ammonium or fusfonium salts as a catalyst. Reaction of ethylene oxide with formaldehyde at 80 to 150 degrees Celsius in the presence of a catalyst leads to the formation of 1,3-dioxylene. Substituting formaldehyde by other aldehydes or ketones results in a 2-substituted 1,3-dioxylene yield, 70-85%, catalyst, tetraethylammonium bromide. Catalytic hydroformylation of ethylene oxide gives hydroxypropanol which can be hydrogenated to propane 1,3-diol CH 2 CH 2 O plus CO plus H two Cho minus CH two CH two minus O plus H two Ho minus CH two CH two CH two Minus O Display style C E CH two CH two O plus C O plus H two to Cho CH two CH two O H two C E plus H two Ho CH two CH two CH two O H Laboratory synthesis Dehydrochlorination of ethylene and its derivatives Dehydrochlorination of 2-chloroethanol, developed by Wurtz back in 1859, remains a common laboratory route to ethylene oxide. ClCH2CH2OH plus NaOH CH2CH2 O plus sodium chloride plus H2 auth reaction is carried out at elevated temperature, and beside sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, calcium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide or carbonates of alkali or alkaline earth metals can be used, with a high yield 90% ethylene oxide can be produced by treating calcium oxide with ethyl hypochlorite, substituting calcium Calcium by other alkaline earth metals reduces the reaction yield. 2CH3CH2OCl plus SO2 CH2CH2O plus calcium chloride plus H2O. Direct oxidation of ethylene by peroxy acids. Ethylene can be directly oxidized into ethylene oxide using peroxy acids, for example, peroxybenzoic or meta-chloro-peroxybenzoic acid. Oxidation by peroxy acids is efficient for higher alkenes, but not for ethylene. The above reaction is slow and has low yield, therefore it is not used in the industry. Other preparative methods other synthesis methods include reaction of diiodoethane with silver oxide I minus 
CH two CH two minus I plus Ag two O CH two CH two O plus two AGI Display style C E I C H two C H two I plus two C H two C H two O plus two A G I and decomposition of ethylene carbonate at 200 to 210 degrees Celsius (392 to 410 degrees Fahrenheit) in the presence of hexachloroethane. Industrial synthesis. History. Commercial production of ethylene oxide dates back to 1914 when BASF built the first factory which used the chlorohydrin process, reaction of ethylene chlorohydrin with calcium hydroxide. The chlorohydrin process was unattractive for several reasons, including low efficiency and loss of valuable chlorine into calcium chloride. More efficient direct oxidation of ethylene by air was invented by Leffert in 1931 and in 1937 Union Carbide opened the first plant using this process. It was further improved in 1958 by Shell Oil Co. by replacing air with oxygen and using elevated temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius (390 to 570 degrees Fahrenheit) and pressure 1 to 3 megapascals (150 to 440 psi). This more efficient routine accounted for about half of ethylene oxide production in the 1950s in the U.S., and after 1975 it completely replaced the previous methods. The production of ethylene oxide accounts for approximately 11% of worldwide ethylene demand. Chlorohydrin process of production of ethylene oxide Although the chlorohydrin process is almost entirely superseded in the industry by the direct oxidation of ethylene, the knowledge of this method is still important for educational reasons and because it is still used in the production of propylene oxide. The process consists of three major steps, synthesis of ethylene chlorohydrin, dehydrochlorination of ethylene chlorohydrin to ethylene oxide and purification of ethylene oxide. Those steps are carried continuously. In the first column, hypochlorination of ethylene is carried out as follows Cl2 plus H2OHOCl plus HClCH2 equals CH2 plus HOCLOCH2CH2ClCH2 equals CH2 plus Cl2ClCH2CH2ClTO suppress the conversion of ethylene into the ethylene dichloride. The last reaction, the concentration of ethylene is maintained at about 4 to 6 percent, and the solution is heated by steam to the boiling point. Next, aqueous solution of ethylene chlorohydrin and enters the second column, where it reacts with a 30% solution of calcium hydroxide at 100 degrees Celsius 212 degrees Fahrenheit. 2OCH2CH2Cl plus calcium hydroxide 2 ch 2 ch 2 o plus calcium chloride plus 2H2 off produced ethylene oxide is purified by rectification. The chlorohydrin process allows to reach 95% conversion of ethylene chlorohydrin. The yield of ethylene oxide is about 80% of the theoretical value, for 1 ton 0.98 long tons, 1.1 short tons of ethylene oxide, about 200 kg 440 pounds of ethylene dichloride is produced. But, the major drawbacks of this process are high chlorine consumption and effluent load. This process is now obsolete. Direct oxidation of ethylene Usage in global industry Direct oxidation of ethylene was patented by Leffert in 1931. This method was repeatedly modified for industrial use, and at least four major variations are known. 
They all use oxidation by oxygen or air and a silver-based catalyst, but differ in the technological details and hardware implementations. Union Carbide, currently a division of Dow Chemical Company, was the first company to develop the direct oxidation process. A similar production method was developed by Scientific Design Co., but it received wider use because of the licensing system. It accounts for 25% of the world's production and for 75% of world S. Licensed production of ethylene oxide. A proprietary variation of this method is used by Japan Catalytic Chemical Co., which adapted synthesis of both ethylene oxide and ethylene glycol in a single industrial complex. A different modification was developed Shell International Chemicals BV. Their method is rather flexible with regard to the specific requirements of specific industries, it is characterized by high selectivity with respect to the ethylene oxide product and long lifetime of the catalyst, three years. It accounts for about 40% of global production. Older factories typically use air for oxidation whereas newer plants and processes, such as Meteor and Japan Catalytic, favor oxygen. Chemistry and kinetics of the direct oxidation process Formally, the direct oxidation process is expressed by the following equation 2 CH2 2 equals CH2 plus O2 AG 2 CH 2 CH 2 O Display style CE two CH underscore two equals CH two plus O two two CE AG two CH two CH two O Delta H equals minus 105 kilojoules, mole however, significant yield of carbon dioxide and water is observed in practice, which can be explained by the complete oxidation of ethylene or ethylene oxide. CH2 equals CH2 plus 3O22 CO2 plus 2H2O, delta H equals minus 1327 kilojoules per mole. CH2 CH2 O plus 2.5022 CO2 plus 2H2O, delta H equals minus 1223 kilojoules. Molt process of heterogeneous catalytic oxidation of ethylene was studied by P. A. Kilty and W. M. H. Satchler, who suggested the following mechanism. O2 plus 4 AG, AG 4 AG plus 2O2 minus ADS. O2 plus AG AG plus plus O2 minus O2 minus ADS plus CH2 equals CH2 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 O plus O ADS 6 O ADS plus CH2 equals CH2 2 CO2 plus 2 H2 O here ADS refers to particles adsorbed on the catalyst surface and AG to particles of silver, directly adjacent to the oxygen atoms. In this process, 1,2-dichloroethane, vinyl chloride are used as inhibitors so as to prevent further oxidation of ethylene oxide to CO2 and H2O. Here, the chemisorbed chlorine hinders dissociative chemisorption of atomic oxygen. Thus the overall reaction is expressed as 7CH2 equals CH2 plus 6O26 CH2 CH2 O plus 2 CO2 plus 2 H2 on the maximum degree of conversion of ethylene to ethylene oxide is 6 sevenths or 85.7%. The catalyst for the reaction is metallic silver deposited on various matrices, including pumice, silica gel, various silicates and aluminosilicates, alumina and silicon carbide, and activated by certain additives, antimony, bismuth, barium peroxide, etc. The process temperature was optimized as 220 to 280 degrees Celsius 430 to 540 degrees Fahrenheit. Lower temperatures reduce the activity of the catalyst, and higher temperatures promote the complete oxidation of ethylene thereby reducing the yield of ethylene oxide. 
elevated pressure of 1 to 3 megapascals 150 to 440 psi increases the productivity of the catalyst and facilitates absorption of ethylene oxide from the reacting gases whereas oxidation by air is still being used oxygen greater than 95% purity is preferred for several reasons such as higher molar yield of ethylene oxide 75 to 82% for oxygen versus 63 to 75% for air higher reaction rate no gas dilution and no need of separate Separating nitrogen in the reaction products. Process overview The production of ethylene oxide on a commercial scale is attained with the unification of the following unit processes Main reactor, Ethylene oxide scrubber, Ethylene oxide desorber, Stripping and distillation column. CO2 scrubber and CO2 discrubber main reactor. The main reactor consists of thousands of catalyst tubes in bundles. These tubes are generally 6 to 15 meters, 20 to 50 feet, long with an inner diameter of 20 to 50 millimeters, 0.8 to 2.0 in. The catalyst packed in these tubes is in the form of spheres or rings of diameter 3 to 10 millimeters, 0.12 to 0.39 in. The operating conditions of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius, 390 to 570 degrees Fahrenheit, with a pressure of 1 to 3 megapascals, 150 to 440 psi, prevail in the reactor. To maintain this temperature, the cooling system of the reactor plays a vital role. With the aging of the catalyst, its selectivity decreases and it produces more exothermic side products of CO2. Ethylene oxide scrubber, after the gaseous stream from the main reactor, containing ethylene oxide, 1-2%, and CO2, 5%, is cooled, it is then passed to the ethylene oxide scrubber. Here, water is used as the scrubbing media which scrubs away majority of ethylene oxide along with some amounts of CO2, N2, CH2 equals CH2, CH4 and aldehydes introduced by the recycle stream. Also, a small proportion of the gas leaving the ethylene oxide scrubber 0.1 to 0.2% is removed continuously combusted to prevent the buildup of inert compounds N2R and C2H6 which are introduced as impurities with the reactants. Ethylene oxide desorber, the aqueous stream resulting from the above scrubbing process is then sent to the ethylene oxide desorber. Here, ethylene oxide is obtained as the overhead product, whereas the bottom product obtained is known as the glycol bleed. When ethylene oxide is scrubbed from the recycle gas with an aqueous solution, ethylene glycols viz. monoethylene glycol, diethylene glycol and other polyethylene glycols get unavoidably produced. Thus, in order to prevent them from building up in the system, they are continuously bled off. Stripping and distillation column. Here, the ethylene oxide stream is stripped off its low boiling components and then distilled in order to separate it into water and ethylene oxide. CO2 scrubber. The recycle stream obtained from the ethylene oxide scrubber is compressed and a side stream is fed to the CO2 scrubber. Here, CO2 gets dissolved into the hot aqueous solution of potassium carbonate, i.e., the scrubbing media. The dissolution of CO2 is not only a physical phenomenon, but a chemical phenomenon as well, for, the CO2 reacts with potassium carbonate to produce potassium hydrogen carbonate. K2CO3 plus CO2 plus H2O2 KHCO3 CO2 discrubber. The above potassium carbonate solution, enriched with CO2, is then sent to the CO2 discrubber where CO2 is discrubbed by stepwise, usually two steps, flashing. The first step is done to remove the hydrocarbon gases, and the second step is employed to strip off CO2. World production of ethylene oxide The world production of ethylene oxide was 20 million tons 22 million short tons, 20 million long tons in 2009, 19 million tons 21 million short tons, 19 million long tons in 2008 and 18 million tons 20 million short tons, 18 million long tons in 2007. This places ethylene oxide 14th most produced organic chemical, whereas the most produced one was ethylene with 113 million tons, 125 million short tons, 111 million long tons. 
Shri Consulting forecasted the growth of consumption of ethylene oxide of 4.4% per year during 2008 to 2013 and 3% from 2013 to 2018. In 2004, the global production of ethylene oxide by region was as follows. The world's largest producers of ethylene oxide are Dow Chemical Company, 3 to 3.5 million tons, 3.3 to 3.9 million short tons, 3.0 to 3.4 million long tons. In 2006, Saudi Basic Industries, 2,000 to 2,500 tons, 2,200 to 2,800 short tons, 2,000 to 2,500 long tons. In 2006, Royal Dutch Shell, 1.328 million tons, 1.464 million short tons, 1.307 million long tons, in 2008-2009, BASF, 1.175 million tons, 1.295 million short tons, 1.156 million long tons, in 2008-2009, China Petrochemical Corporation, approximately 1 million ton, 1.1 million short tons, 0.98 million long tons, in 2006, Formosa Plastics, approximately 1 million ton, 1.1 million short tons, 0.98 million long tons, in 2006, and Ineos, 0.92 million tons, 1.01 million short tons, 0.91 million long tons, in 2008-2009. Applications Ethylene oxide is one of the most important raw materials used in large-scale chemical production. Most ethylene oxide is used for synthesis of ethylene glycols, including diethylene glycol and triethylene glycol, that accounts for up to 75% of global consumption. Other important products include ethylene glycol ethers, ethanolamines and ethoxylates. Among glycols, ethylene glycol is used as antifreeze, in the production of polyester and polyethylene terephthalate, PET raw material for plastic bottles, liquid coolants and solvents. Polyethylene glycols are used in perfumes, cosmetics, pharmaceuticals, lubricants, paint thinners and plasticizers. Ethylene glycol ethers are part of brake fluids, detergents, solvents, lacquers and paints. Other products of ethylene oxide. Ethanolamines are used in the manufacture of soap and detergents and for purification of natural gas. Ethoxylates are reaction products of ethylene oxide with higher alcohols, acids or amines. They are used in the manufacture of detergents, surfactants, emulsifiers and dispersants, whereas synthesis of ethylene glycols is the major application of ethylene oxide, its percentage varies greatly depending on the region, from 44% in the Western Europe, 63% in Japan and 73% in North America to 90% in the rest of Asia and 99% in Africa. Production of ethylene glycol Ethylene glycol is industrially produced by non-catalytic hydration of ethylene oxide at a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius (392 degrees Fahrenheit) and a pressure of 1.5 to 2 megapascals (220 to 290 psi). CH2CH2O plus H2OHOCH2CH2OB products of the reaction are diethylene glycol, triethylene glycol and polyglycols with the total of about 10%, which are separated from the ethylene glycol by distillation at reduced pressure. Another synthesis method is the reaction of ethylene oxide and CO2 temperature 80 to 120 degrees Celsius 176 to 248 degrees Fahrenheit and pressure of 5. 2 MPa yielding ethylene carbonate and its subsequent hydrolysis with decarboxylation CH 2 CH 2 O plus CO 2 O Minus CH two CH two minus O C equals O ethylene carbonate minus 
CO two plus H two O Hope two CH two O Display style C E C H two C H two O plus co two two overset ethylene carbonate O C H two C H underscore two O C equals O two C E plus H two O C E C O two H O C H two C H two O H Modern technologies of production of ethylene glycol include the following. Shell Omega Technology Only Mono Ethylene Glycol Advantage is a two-step synthesis of ethylene carbonate using a phosphonium halide as a catalyst. The glycol yield is 99 to 99.5%, with other glycols practically absent. The main advantage of the process is production of pure ethylene glycol without the need for further purification. The first commercial plant which uses this method was opened in 2008 in South Korea. Dow Meteor, most effective technology for ethylene oxide reactions, is an integrated technology for producing ethylene oxide and its subsequent hydrolysis into ethylene glycol. The glycol yield is 90 to 93%. The main advantage of the process is relative simplicity, using fewer stages and less equipment. Conversion to ethylene glycol is also the means by which waste ethylene oxide is scrubbed before venting to the environment. Typically the ETO is passed over a matrix containing either sulfuric acid or potassium permanganate. Production of glycol ethers The major industrial esters of mono, D and triethylene glycols are methyl, ethyl and normal butyl ethers, as well as their acetates and phthalate. The synthesis involves reaction of the appropriate alcohol with ethylene oxide, CH2CH2O plus Rho HOCH2CH2OR CH2CH2O plus HOCH2CH2OR HOCH2CH2OCH2CH2OR CH2CH2O plus HOCH2CH2OCH2CH2OR HOCH2CH2OCH2CH2OCH2CH2OR reaction of monosters with an acid or its anhydride leads to the formation of the esters CH3CO2H plus HOCH2CH2CH2OROCH2CH2OCOCH3 plus H2O Production of ethanolamines In the industry, ethanolamines mono, D and triethanolamines, are produced by reacting ammonia and ethylene oxide in anhydrous medium at a temperature of 40 to 70 degrees Celsius 100 to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, and pressure of 1.5 to 3.5 MPa 220 to 510 PSI MPa, CH2CH2O plus NH3HOCH2CH2NH2 2CH2CH2O plus NH3HOCH2CH2NH 3CH2CH2O plus NH3HOCH2CH2 3 NAL 3 ethanolamines are produced in the process, while ammonia and part of methylamine are recycled. The final products are separated by vacuum distillation. Hydroxyacolamines are produced in a similar process. CH2CH2O plus RNH2HOCH2CH2NHR 2CH2CH2O plus RNH2HOCH2CH2-2NR monosubstituted products are formed by reacting a large excess of amine with ethylene oxide in presence of water and at a temperature below 100 degrees Celsius 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Disubstituted products are obtained with a small excess of ethylene oxide, at a temperature of 120 to 140 degrees Celsius 250 to 280 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pressure of 0.3 to 0.5 MPa 45 to 75 PSI. Production of ethoxylates 
Industrial production of ethoxylates is realized by a direct reaction of higher alcohols, acids or amines with ethylene oxide in the presence of an alkaline catalyst at a temperature of 120 to 180 degrees Celsius, 250 to 360 degrees Fahrenheit. Modern plants producing ethoxylates are usually based on the bus loop reactor's technology, which is based on a three-stage continuous process. In the first stage, the initiator or catalyst of the reaction and the feedstock are fed into the container, where they are mixed, heated and vacuum dried. Then reaction is carried out in a special insulated reactor in an inert atmosphere nitrogen, to prevent a possible explosion of ethylene oxide. Finally, the reaction mixture is neutralized, degassed and purified. Production of acrylonitrile Currently, most acrylonitrile 90% in 2008, is produced by the Sohio method, which is based on the catalytic oxidation of propylene in the presence of ammonia and bismuth phosphomolybdate. However, until 1960 a key production process was addition of hydrogen cyanide to ethylene oxide, followed by dehydration of the resulting cyanohydrin. CH 2 CH 2 O plus HCN HOPE 2 CH 2 CN minus H 2 O CH two equals CH minus CN Display style C E CH two CH two O plus H C N to H O C H two C H two C N two C E H two O CH two equals C H C N Addition of hydrocyanic acid to ethylene oxide is carried out in the presence of a catalyst sodium hydroxide and diethylamine, and dehydration of cyanohydrin occurs in the gas phase upon the catalytic action of aluminium oxide. Non-industrial uses the direct use of ethylene oxide accounts for only 0.05% of its global production. Ethylene oxide is used as a sterilizing agent, disinfecting agent and fumigant as a mixture with carbon dioxide 8.5 to 80% of ethylene oxide, nitrogen or dichlorodifluoromethane 12% ethylene oxide. It is applied for gas phase sterilization of medical equipment and instruments, packaging materials and clothing, surgical and scientific equipment, for processing of storage facilities, tobacco, packages of grain, sacks of rice, etc., clothing, furs and valuable documents. Healthcare sterilant Ethylene oxide is one of the most commonly used sterilization methods in the healthcare industry because of its non-damaging effects for delicate instruments and devices that require sterilization, and for its wide range of material compatibility. It is used for instruments that cannot tolerate heat, moisture or abrasive chemicals, such as electronics, optical equipment, paper, rubber and plastics. It was developed in the 1940s as a sterilant by the U.S. military, and its use as a medical sterilant dates to the late 1950s, when the McDonald process was patented for medical devices. The anproline system was patented in the 1960s by Anderson Products, and it remains the most commonly used system in several niche markets, notably the veterinary market and some international markets. It relies on the use of a flexible sterilization chamber and an ETO cartridge for small volume sterilization, and where environmental and or portability considerations dictate the use of a low dose. It is therefore referred to as the flexible chamber sterilization method, or the gas diffusion sterilization method. In the United States, the operation of ETO sterilization is overseen by the EPA through the National Emission Standard for Hazardous Air Pollutants. Niche uses 
Ethylene oxide is used as an accelerator of maturation of tobacco leaves and fungicide. Ethylene oxide is also used as a main component of thermobaric weapons, fuel air explosives. Ethylene is used in the synthesis in 2-butoxyethanol, which is a solvent used in many products. Identification of ethylene oxide Gas chromatography is the principal method for analysis and detection of ethylene oxide. An inexpensive test for ethylene oxide exploits its precipitation of solid hydroxides of metals when it is passed through aqueous solutions of their salts. 2 CH2 CH2 O plus manganese 2 chloride plus 2 H2O2 HO CH2 CH2 Cl plus manganese 2 hydroxide Similarly, ethylene oxide is detected by the bright pink color of the indicator when passing air through aqueous solutions of some salts of sodium or potassium, chlorides, iodides, thiosulfates, etc. with the addition of phenolphthalein. CH2 CH2 O plus sodium chloride plus H2O HO CH2 CH2 Cl plus now other methods of ethylene oxide detection are color reactions with pyridine derivatives and hydrolysis of ethylene glycol with periodic acid. The produced iodic acid is detected with silver nitrate. Fire and explosion hazards Ethylene oxide is extremely flammable, and its mixtures with air are explosive. When heated it may rapidly expand, causing fire and explosion. A number of industrial accidents have been attributed to ethylene oxide explosion. The autoignition temperature is 429 degrees Celsius, 804 degrees Fahrenheit. Decomposition temperature of 571 degrees Celsius, 1060 degrees Fahrenheit at 101.3 kilopascals, 14.69 psi. Minimum inflammable content in the air is 2.7% and maximum limit is 100%. The NFPA rating is NFPA 704. Ethylene oxide in presence of water can hydrolyze to ethylene glycol and form polyethylene oxide which then eventually gets oxidized by air and leads to hotspots that can trigger to explosive decomposition. Fires caused by ethylene oxide are extinguished by traditional media, including foam, carbon dioxide or water. Suppression of this activity can be done by blanketing with an inert gas until total pressure reaches non-explosive range. Extinguishing of burning ethylene oxide is complicated by that it can continue burning in an inert atmosphere and in water solutions. Fire suppression is reached only upon dilution with water above 22 to 1. Physiological effects Effect on microorganisms Exposure to ethylene oxide gas causes alkylation to microorganisms at a nuclear level. The disinfectant effect of ethylene oxide is similar to that of sterilization by heat, but because of limited penetration, it affects only the surface. ETO sterilization can take up to 12 hours due to its slow action upon microorganisms, and lengthy processing and aeration time. Effects on humans and animals Ethylene oxide is an alkylating agent, it has irritating, sensitizing and narcotic effects. Chronic exposure to ethylene oxide is also mutagenic. The International Agency for Research on Cancer classifies ethylene oxide into group 1, meaning it is a proven carcinogen. Ethylene oxide is classified as a class 2 carcinogen by the German Mock Commission and as a class A2 carcinogen by the ACGIH. A 2003 study of 7,576 women exposed while at work in commercial sterilization facilities in the U.S. suggests ethylene oxide is associated with breast cancer incidence. A 2004 follow-up study analyzing 18,235 men and women workers exposed to ethylene oxide from 1987 to 1998 concluded. There was little evidence of any excess cancer mortality for the cohort as a whole, with the exception of bone cancer based on small numbers. Positive exposure response trends for lymphoid tumors were found for males only. Reasons for the sex specificity of this effect are not known. There was also some evidence of a positive exposure response for breast cancer mortality. 
An increased incidence of brain tumors and mononuclear cell leukemia was found in rats that had inhaled ethylene oxide at concentrations of 10, 33 or 100 milliliters per cubic meter, 0.0100, 0.0329 or 0.0997 imp Florida Oz CU feet over a period of two years. An increased incidence of peritoneal mesotheliomas was also observed in the animals exposed to concentrations of 33 and 100 milliliters per cubic meter, 0.0329 and 0.0997 imp Florida Oz CU feet. Results of human epidemiological studies on workers exposed to ethylene oxide differ. There is evidence from both human and animal studies that inhalation exposure to ethylene oxide can result in a wide range of carcinogenic effects. Ethylene oxide is toxic by inhalation, with a U.S. OSHA permissible exposure limit calculated as a TWA time-weighted average over 8 hours of 1 ppm, and a short-term exposure limit, excursion limit calculated as a TWA over 15 minutes of 5 ppm. At concentrations in the air about 200 parts per million, ethylene oxide irritates mucous membranes of the nose and throat. Higher contents cause damage to the trachea and bronchi, progressing into the partial collapse of the lungs. High concentrations can cause pulmonary edema and damage the cardiovascular system. The damaging effect of ethylene oxide may occur only after 72 hours after exposure. The maximum content of ethylene oxide in the air according to the U.S. standards ACGIH, is 1.8 mg per cubic meter 0.00079 gr cu feet. NIOSH has determined that the immediately dangerous to life and health level IDLH, is 800 ppm, because the odor threshold for ethylene oxide varies between 250 and 700 ppm, the gas is already at toxic concentrations when it can be smelled. Even then, the odor of ethylene oxide is sweet, aromatic, and can easily be mistaken for the pleasant aroma of diethyl ether, a common laboratory solvent of very low toxicity. In view of these insidious warning properties, continuous electrochemical monitors are standard practice, and it is forbidden to use ethylene oxide to fumigate building interiors in the EU and some other jurisdictions. Ethylene oxide causes acute poisoning, accompanied by a variety of symptoms. Central nervous system effects are frequently associated with human exposure to ethylene oxide in occupational settings. Headache, nausea, and vomiting have been reported. Peripheral neuropathy, impaired hand-eye coordination and memory loss have been reported in more recent case studies of chronically exposed workers at estimated average exposure levels as low as 3 ppm, with possible short-term peaks as high as 700 ppm. The metabolism of ethylene oxide is not completely known. Data from animal studies indicate two possible pathways for the metabolism of ethylene oxide, hydrolysis to ethylene glycol and glutathione conjugation to form mercaptoric acid and methiometabolites. Ethylene oxide easily penetrates through ordinary clothing and footwear, causing skin irritation and dermatitis with the formation of blisters, fever and leukocytosis. Toxicity data for ethylene oxide are as follows. Eye exposure, 18 mg, 0.28 gr, 6 hours, rabbit. Oral, 72 mg per kilogram, 0.00115 ounces per pound, rat, LD50, 1,186 mg per kilogram, 0.01898 ounces per pound, rat, TDLO, 5,112 mg per kilogram, 0.08179 ounces per pound, rat, TD. Inhalation, 12,500 ppm, human, TCLO, 960 ppm, 4 hours, dog, LC50, 33 to 50 ppm, rat or mouse, TC, 800 ppm, 4 hours, rat or mouse, LC50. Subcutaneous injection, 100 mg per kilogram, 0.0016 ounces per pound, cat, LDLO, 292 mg per kilogram, 0.00467 ounces per pound, mouse, TDLO, 900 to 2600 mg per kilogram, 0.014 to 0.042 ounces per pound, mouse, TD, 187 mg per kilogram, 0.00299 9 ounces per pound, rat, LD50. 
Intraperitoneal injection, 750 mg per kilogram, 0.0120 ounces per pound. Mouse, TDLO, 175 mg per kilogram, 0.00280 ounces per pound. Mouse, LD50. Intravenous injection, 175 mg per kilogram, 0.00280 ounces per pound. Rabbit, LD50, 290 mg per kilogram, 0.0046 ounces per pound. Mouse, LD50. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency US EPA, estimated in 2016 that for low doses, the inhalation of ethylene oxide for a lifetime could increase an individual's lifetime cancer risk by as much as 3.0 times 10 minus 3 per micrograms per cubic meter, without considering that early life exposures are likely more potent. The US EPA estimated the slope of the dose response declines at higher doses, and extra cancer risk estimates for several occupational exposure scenarios are calculated. Global demand Global EO demand has expanded from 16.6 MT, 18.3 million short tons, 16.3 million long tons, in 2004 to 20 MT, 22 million short tons, 20 million long tons, in 2009, while demand for refined EO expanded from 4.64 MT, 5.11 million short tons, 4.57 million long tons, in 2004 to 5.6 MT, 6.2 million short tons, 5. 5 million long tons in 2008. In 2009, demand is estimated to have declined to about 5.2 mt, 5.7 million short tons, 5.1 million long tons. Total EO demand registered a growth rate of 5.6% per annum during the period 2005 to 2009 and is projected to grow at 5.7% per annum during 2009 to 2013. References Cited sources Haynes, William M., ed. 2011. CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics, 92nd ed. Boca Raton, FL, CRC Press. ISBN 1439855110. Haynes, William M., ed. 2011. EOSA promoting the safe use of ethylene oxide for sterilization Webhook page for C2H4O National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, Ethylene Oxide Topic Page CDC, NIOSH Pocket Guide to Chemical Hazards EOSA Memo about Ethylene Oxide ETO, Facts